Heather, welcome to A House for Arts. It's a pleasure to have you. Thanks for having me. So tell me about CREATE. What is it set out to do? And does the name stand for anything? I think it's an acronym. Yes, it is. <laughs> Lots of periods in our name. Um, CREATE is uh, Capital Region Expressive Arts Transformation and Empowerment. Um, and we were formed by art therapists and art educators, um, partially because we saw a void in um, the expressive arts in the capital region. Mm -hmm. um, and by expressive arts, I mean not just visual arts, though we tend to have like a visual art bent to our programming. Um, but as an art therapist, um, I was getting lots of calls from different agencies wanting training, wanting art therapy for their consumers, and started to feel like we needed some more sort of consolidated effort mm -hmm. around um, the arts and healing in, in the capital region. What kinds of programs has CREATE done recently? And any ones, too, that stick out to you as really successful or, or really engaging? Yeah. Um, so it, it's definitely been um, a, a work in progress. We've been around for, uh, we'll be entering our fourth year in 2021. Um, so we've kind of gradually grown. Um, the last, uh, you know, obviously this last year has been a little different than, than other years. Um, but really, um, I think our focus is really ar around um, families and kids and um, how um, art can bring people together. So in terms of uh, successful programming, um, most of it's most of it's been successful. <laughs> um, but I think that um, our, some of the, the most profound um, programs that we've, we've really been proud of are some of our community art projects that we've done, public mm -hmm. art wise, but also um, our team programming in both. What um, is it about them that makes them so successful in your opinion? Well, um, with the the teen programming in particular, I think it's that um, a lot of a lot of times teenagers feel misunderstood by their families or the larger community. And what we, was me? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and many of our students actually, it's even way beyond that. Where it's not just a woe is me. They really have significant mental health concerns, yeah. and um, particularly right now during COVID. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, come from backgrounds where their families really truly don't understand them or are having conflicts. And we really pride ourselves on being a safe place. Um, so that has been um, something that's very exciting to see is some of those students who've been with us for a number of years now, and now they're in college or they've, they're pursuing careers, and it's, it's exciting. Um, in the community art realm, um, that's more of like the broader art is empowerment and community empowerment. Um, you know going to racial and social justice or just, you know, having the community come out to um, paint a mural and, and civic pride. Right, and I understand that you have locations both in Schenectady and in Saratoga Springs. Yes. Am I right about yes, that? Yes, correct. So I'm kind of curious to know, we'll come back to the idea of community here, because yeah. I think that's important, but how did you become executive director <laughs> of CREATE? And, you know, how did you, I imagine you do art yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, as I mentioned, I'm an art therapist. My, myself and um, a colleague, Eileen Lopez, and I, um, one of the first times we met, um, just purely through needing to connect with other art therapists, um, we started talking about how we needed to create a community studio, that there wasn't anything like this mm -hmm. in the capital region. There are in, in other communities, and um, it, it was a seed that grew over a number of years until we finally found the right spaces, and then we pulled uh, Julie Lewis, our other co-founder, into um, her uh, backgrounds in early childhood and art and um, kind of helped fill out the program. So um, I just kind of fell into the role of executive director, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, just uh, purely by ha happenstance, but also, you know, I've got some background in business and, and um, was run running a private practice and stuff like that before, right. before starting CREATE. That's really interesting, Heather, that a lot of the folks that you work with, including yourself, have some background in counseling or therapy. And I think sometimes people don't traditionally associate those things together. Yeah. But it sounds like that's really important. Um, you know, I was looking at your calendar for what you have going on this yeah. month, because you have this online calendar on your yes. website. And there's 
things that I saw on your calendar, like Open Studios yeah. or Clay Day, and then yeah. there was something that caught my eye that that says um, coping through creativity. I think. Yeah, coping creatively. Co coping creatively. Yeah. <laughs> forgive me. Can you tell us a little bit about these sessions? Yeah. Like, what what kinds of students are enrolling in these? Yeah. What do they get yeah. out of them? So the coping creatively group is is actually a true art therapy group and and kind of operates independently from Create. Um, Got it. And because it's run by licensed um, mental health professionals, um, so it's more that we we use the studio space um, for the groups, and that is uh, folks who are dealing with mental profound mental health issues. Mm -hmm. um, Open Studio is um, a, a much looser form of art therapy. I mean, it's it's technically not art therapy; it's art as therapy, mm -hmm. um, where. You know, you come in and we introduce, if you're, it's the first time coming into the, the studio, we introduce a number of projects um, that you could potentially do, talk to you about what you're interested in investigating art material-wise, um, and generally just have, encourage people to just play. Because mm -hmm. um, I think that's something that we've gotten away from. Um, a lot of times, you know, we look on Pinterest and we see this project right, that looks right. like great to create. And it's very product driven. Um, Peyton Sips, um, right. you know, it's very product driven. And it's very digital, right? Yeah. Because what you're getting people to do in Create and these studios in Create is to, to touch things and it's tactile and they're playing right. with clay and they're playing with materials. Right, and right. It seems like during the pandemic too, <laughs> kind of are lacking like being able to to touch things right. while we're sanitizing our hands. <laughs> I mean that must be a real kind of release almost for the students. Yeah, and that's the there's a very important um component of of art making that's sensory mm -hmm. and and that's what makes art grounding is you are actually tactilely doing something with your hands. Um, and I think too the big our big um, focus is that process. Um, of just really being mindful with the art materials and um, being present in the moment. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you might make a mess, but it's okay to make a mess because um, right. life is messy. Right. So that's kind of one of our mottos. Um, sometimes people roll their eyes at me. <laughs> people who know me well, <laughs> oh yeah, here she goes again, life is messy. Um, but it is, I mean, we've seen that a lot this, this year in particular. and. Um, you know, this is a safe space to make a mess. Um, right, right, especially with all these protocols about order and keeping things safe and keeping things clean, which yeah. I'm not criticizing that that's essential, Right. but it sounds to me too like it's also good to have a space where you can kind of shed those types of rules a little bit yeah. in terms of just getting your hands messy and yeah. things like that. And not. I think sometimes it's really hard for people to let go of that. Mm -hmm. You know, we're, we're very um, product driven in our society and mm. um, we want things to turn out a certain way because it's predictable. Yeah. And um, sometimes yeah. the idea of making something where you don't know what the outcome is gonna be can be really scary. Um, so it's it's a very different mindset, um, mm -hmm. and that's what what kind of makes us different from from a lot of other art studios. So this is really fascinating, Heather. I'm, I kind of want to come back to this idea of grounding and the idea of working with something that maybe is not predictable. You don't know yeah. the outcome. Yeah. How might that be? essential for people because we often hear about you know of course like food and groceries and medicine are essential yeah but as from the perspective of an art therapist how might things like that grounding and that expression that you get from art making and the mess that you can make how is that essential to people right now yeah um so maybe going back to this i think i mentioned uh play mm -hmm. you know one of the first things we do when we're we're little kids is we make a mess, right? We're just purely like, we don't care what we're doing. We're right, just that's making why kids a mess. Like baking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We just, are, that's how we investigate and learn how to do things by making mistakes. And um, we lose that in adulthood. Mm -hmm. And um, I, there was a really interesting podcast um, by uh, Brene Brown talking about the power of play. And um, that's, I mean, uh, mindfulness, play, art making, it's all really connected because we just want to be present in the moment in terms of um, what we're doing, Let, not thinking about the stuff that's going on in our head, but just mm -hmm. being present with ourselves, being present with each other. Um, and that's something that, that we lose a lot of right now.
Well, that all sounds really exciting, Heather, and I can't wait to check out the website again. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you so much for being on A House for Arts. It was such a pleasure talking with you. Thank you.